what's going on guys today i'm just going to talk a little bit about uh, the autobiography of benjamin franklin uh, which i have to my side here uh, this is the dover thrift edition it's like five dollars quite a good steal uh, i'm not sure if it comes in any other uh, edition or, or if, it, if it comes from any other publishing company however uh, this is the one that i picked up so i came across the autobiography of, of benjamin franklin in quite a roundabout way actually um, I stumbled upon Britannica's Great Books of the Western World um, a few months ago, or even a year ago now, and um, I looked into these books and I thought, well, this is quite an, an impressive thing. Um, it's essentially a corpus of of all the books which they think uh, strings together the the, the the line of Western thought um, from the Greeks to the modern day. I believe there's two editions. Uh, the most recently updated one was. 1950s i believe i believe they go all the way up to deconstruction and, and postmodernism. have i'm not entirely sure so don't uh, you know fact check me on that um, i'm just sort of guessing at this stage i haven't looked into it that thoroughly um but yeah so i thought the britannica's uh, corpus is really is quite quite impressive so i thought well, is there any other alternatives potentially because these books are pretty expensive and for the most part um I'm talking to people and reading them on forums and whatnot they're really just sort of a collector's um, a novelty token item which sits on the bookshelf and a sort of decoration uh, for libraries is sort of the you know peacocking of sorts saying well look i've got the whole corpus of of britannica so i thought well is there any other alternative um, um is this is this britannica's um, um, um line of western thought representative of of, of the most sort of um, accurate picture of, of thought is it the most balanced so i went looking and i, f I stumbled across um harvard's um, uh, and I'm not entirely sure what it's called. Uh, Harvard's sort of a parallel to this, and I believe it's something like five feet of of of, of books, which they um, which they have put together, not not from a historical perspective. So they haven't started from the earliest thinkers, which Britannica has done, and then gone all the way to to the current day. So it's not a chronology. They've really just strung it together um, with the aims of putting books in a, in a certain order to facilitate development of the person. And of an of an individual, so it's sort of a reading guide. It's a sort of um, um, a course of sorts that you take, and then you um, it's accompanied by notes, <coughs> notes and whatnot. It's accompanied by comments, and then so you start from book one if you want, and then you go from then onwards. And um, I believe you know their, their goal is to is to sort of create well rounded, balanced individuals who have been exposed to numerous books, and then so um, it starts off in quite a peculiar way. Um, the first book and first recommendation is the autobiography of Benjamin Franklin. So when I saw this was this was the first book of recommendation, I thought, well, so why is is Benjamin Franklin out of all people being recommended as the as the as the starting place for the for the development of of an individual's thinking and thoughts, um, so I was really curious about that, and and and, and out of just chance and and um, pure sort of um, novelty, I said, well, okay, cool, let's let's read this book and see what it says about it. And now, re having having read the autobiography of of Benjamin Franklin, it, it makes a lot more sense um, why they put it as the first one. So, this book was written in the 1700s. Of course, this is when Benjamin Franklin was 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 living. Um, and it's split into two uh, two parts. So the first part he wrote when he was young, um, in his in his early sort of uh, manhood, and then later on he he wrote it, uh, the second part when he was a um, a later a later uh, older man really. So it, it does co it has a sort of contrasting style because you see his writing styles changing a little bit, evolving, molding, and then his attitude of course, and you know life changes you know. And, and 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 just because you wrote a certain way when you're young doesn't mean you're going to write the same way when you're older so so um those two things change quite a little bit um however for the most part it's it's pretty consistent um the i enjoyed the first part a bit more than the, the second part um the first part he details his childhood growing up um his experiences his family how he got to where he is right now in a certain way uh, how he got into politics and whatnot and trading and, and, and discussions. Um, and the second part is a bit more focused on on the political side and, and his ventures um, in terms of his engagements in, in civil society. Uh, so Benjamin Franklin is, is associated as being one of the founding fathers of America. And um, his, his main contribution, I believe, is that he uh, contributed quite significantly to the writing of the Constitution. So this is what benjamin franklin is uh is best known for 
and of course he's been quoted uh, numerous times in um, uh, pop popular culture of course he's on the on the dollar bill and therefore he gets all these you know if you hear rap songs and whatnot they always uh, say they got Benji's so um, Benjamin Franklin's name has definitely been um, you know, uh, spread for far and wide now um, but uh, uh, starting from his um, early days uh, he's actually a a individual who came from quite humble modest beginnings and um, this is quite different than a lot of intellectuals from this time from the early 1700s and 1800s um, what's quite sad sometimes is seeing that these famous um, writers and authors and thinkers come from aristocratic families so um, of course the average income and then the salary of most people back back in these times was quite low and, and only the rich could afford proper education so the rich sent their children to schools which were then um, um, these people were taught properly and, and they were actually um, you know taught how to how you know they, they were able to choose a profession rather than being sort of um, destined to just do what your father did or, or, or what your mother was doing you know that was your line of work um, in contrast they were able to go out and develop themselves and grow and then choose their own disciplines so sometimes you'll you'll, you'll actually a lot of times actually you'll find out when you look into the history of people like for example Charles Darwin Aldous Huxley, um, you'll see that they come from wealthy aristocratic families and therefore they were able to be educated. Whereas Benjamin Franklin, on the other hand, is an individual who went to school um, and then he, he sort of uh, had to drop out because his family couldn't afford education and he instead started helping on his, in his family projects. Um, now, just one thing I want to mention before I keep going on is that um, I believe this, there's, there's currently quite a lot of controversy and and um, I wouldn't say spite, but the the the, the uh, topic is quite heated at this stage um, when you talk about American historical figures uh, because of the uh, repercussions and the and the um, sort of implications that the the slave trade had on American history. You know, so whenever you read these historical figures from American um, from American culture, uh, sometimes it's tainted with uh, with this. Um, um, uh, unfortunate uh, flavor of, of colonialism that's the thing which you have to keep in mind um, although they are great historical figures sometimes if they've been associated with these movements it does it does um, puts you off a little bit however for the most part I think it's still very very valuable to study these figures and and see how they progressed and and just because you don't necessarily agree with their philosophies doesn't mean you shouldn't read about them you shouldn't actually engage with these people um, through their books you shouldn't think about their their thoughts you shouldn't try and um, um, see how their life can relate to yours right you, just because you don't agree with what they did doesn't necessarily mean you have to block yourself off intellectually and stunt your own development because of because of what they did right you know you, just because you read something doesn't necessarily mean that you have to entertain it right that's a major major distinction i think which is so important and to keep that in mind throughout your whole life you, you just at least i try to remind myself all the time that this has to be the case so that's one thing i really want to mention that just because america has a, a, a dirty past it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to um, block yourself off from from these uh, figures which are which are associated with these movements you don't have to necessarily agree with them though that's the thing but still you know it's important um so just going back to the book yeah he he goes he, in the first part he goes through his early life and then he, he talks about how he was poor and how he had to drop out of school but he always had a passion for education he had a passion for educating himself and and, and knowledge so he wanted to read and th this is this is where it ties into the harvard classics okay this is where it all makes sense he wanted to read but he had no money to read his family had no money to read and books were quite rare back then because unlike today where we have the internet and all these archives where things are completely free you had to buy these things and, and, and even if you had the money it was difficult sometimes to access them because of trade routes and and, and the globe the world wasn't as, wasn't as globalized so to actually get your hands on these things was was a challenging feat and um so he he wanted to read so you know what he did he collected one of his uncles i believe his uncle was a, was a preacher or a pastor and he used to collect his uncle's sermons and he used to store his uncle's sermons and read them because this was what written text he had and um from this from this uh, sort of position he started building his library and he always had a thirst for knowledge he always had a thirst for reading and he decided to 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 instead of um 
taking his circumstances and being uh, de uh, depressed and, and, and spiteful about them, he worked with what he had, which was his uncle's sermons. And then when he had more money, he invested in a proper library and, and more and more books. And this is quite you know, humbling when you think about today's world where we have access to millions of books, all the books we want. In fact, the Harvard classics, the, 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 the guide, the reading guide, they provide PDF copies of every single book that they cite. Right, so you can do everything online. All you need is an internet connection. In fact, even internet connections are free. So this is, to me, that, that, was, that was so humbling realizing that. And it really put me back a few notches and just allowed me to appreciate what we have today. And, and you have to realize as well that these things can be taken away from us at any time point. Um, but that's a different discussion and, <laughs> and a different rant, I guess. But he started from this position of, of, of reading sermons and then he built his library after that so he so when he got more money he he used that money and he bought books so he exposed himself to different thinkers and he started reading the early greeks and then the, and how the greeks thought and how so socrates thoughts and then he took that and then from what he read and he applied it to his own life um and then he took the the the, the spirit of development the spirit of reading the spirit of of sort of uplifting up, uplifting one's own soul um, through through entertaining different ideas he took this and he ran with it and he and he used it as a sort of fundamental basis for his life and a fundamental philosophy that he approached the rest of, the, of his life with and he actually started creating book clubs and little discussions in societies where him and his friends and colleagues would get together and they would debate texts that texts they would debate um, ideas and then they would they would entertain different thinkers and they were given um, okay so you're gonna go and read um, um, you know Plato this week and come back and give us a, a, a lecture and write an essay on his thoughts and then we're going to debate it and, and say why you're wrong and say why you're right and and come to a conclusion and it, it was all in good spirit it was all in the spirit of development right so this is the, the key thing here um, so he took this and he ran with it um, later on, and um, the book progresses, and he talks about his engagements in, in civil society when he started finally approaching um, politics and and discussions with uh, uh, bureaucrats and whatnot. And he started having some sort of a, of an influence in the social sphere because he came from a, a humble place. He worked his way up, bought a printing press. These are all details in the book. I don't want to go into them too much. He bought a printing press and a, and a sort of company, and and then he worked his way up through society. In a certain way, a key thing which I think one is able to take away from this book is the power of networking, the power of talking to people, the power of communicating with others and interchanging ideas and making friendships and avoiding certain friendships and avoiding certain people and then sort of studying people. He talks about tycoons who had a lot of money who wanted to invest in him, but they would all talk, they would talk, talk, talk about how they were going to help him out. So they would do this, they would do that. And then when the push came to shove, when he really put the, put the fire to them, they were unable to really come through. They were all talk. And then later on, he found out that this is what they were known for. That was just, that was Charlie who was, who was known for having a lot of money that he probably inherited. And then he really couldn't do anything with it. He was maybe a drunk. He was, he was, he was a bit useless with his, with his money. He wasn't an ambitious person. Uh, so he talks about several of these cases where he thought he was a young, he was a young, naive individual and just coming up in the world and he trusted these people and then they just let him down time after time. And then eventually through his experiences, he was able to hone um, his own, his own um, uh, reason a little bit more. And he was able to uh, read people a bit more and uh, uh, put himself in better positions uh, for the future. <clears throat> Um, that is one main thing I took away from the book for sure. Um, I took away the, 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 the spirit of, of self-development and then I also took away uh, the, the, the importance of, of being careful with your associations and, and being careful with your friendships and reading people but at the same time being ambitious and not being scared to take risks and step on other people's feet when you feel like they're not the ones who are best fit for the job. Um, when you feel as though maybe you're better for it, you know, you have to sort of make yourself heard if, if you're an ambitious individual and you want certain things in your life. Um, the second part, he talks a lot about his later life and he reminisces a little bit. He talks about his engagements in politics and then how he talk, talks a little bit about the wars. And so the, the first part for me was really enjoyable. The second part was a bit less enjoyable. It was still uh, beneficial. I still took it, enjoyed it for sure. 
Um, I don't regret, you know, reading it, no, not even, not by any chance. Um, and um, so, yeah, linking these two things together, um, it has to be noted that when someone's writing about themselves, it's an autobiography, right? So I think it's just general human nature and psychology to, to put yourself in the best light, or even, I feel like we might even do it unconsciously to talk about ourselves in, in, the, in the best possible way or in, a, or in a good way, right? In a good light, maybe not the best possible way, unless you're a sort of <laughs> narcissist of sorts of something, but it's, it's human nature to, to, to see ourselves in a good way, right? So when it's an autobiography, you have to understand that they may not be putting the uh, things in their correct context they may be lying a bit maybe uh, you know um, um, glorifying certain things they may be uh, downplaying other p aspects of it right because it's an autobiography you're you're, you're reading you're, you're writing about your life and you want people to take something away from your life um, if the individual is very virtuous and they have a, a high moral character and and they they hold themselves to a certain standard of course then you have a more honest and, and thorough critique of, of, of one's life and thorough um, thorough um, representation of one's life. But that is, is a very important to understand with, with autobiographies, I think. And I always keep that in mind. So it's like, is, is, is this really what happened? Is, it, is he just uh, overplaying this? Of course, you know, because he wants people to think that he, he was a certain way. Um, and therefore, it's important to then read um, other people's accounts of that person because what one person thinks of themselves is different than what others think of them. Uh, and you just can't get away from that. So yeah, just to recap, uh, Benjamin Franklin, it's a sort of guide for self-development. It's an example of how people from humble beginnings can then take their circumstances and work quite hard to put themselves in positions which then others would deem um, quite respectable. Um, it's a way of improving yourself. It's a sort of manual and it's an example. That's really what it is. It's an, it's an example of someone who started from modest places and was able to uh, make something quite admirable out of it, um, irrespective of all the other things which go along with American society and um, and other other sort of positions um, regarded you know in regards to colonialism and whatnot. So yeah, Benjamin Franklin autobiography uh, definitely recommended. I can I see exactly why Harvard put it as their starting point for the for their guide for self development. Um, it's worthwhile reading. It's um, it's something which which gives you a fire. Um, it encourages you to hustle. It encourages you to work harder. It stimulates um, your own thinking. It makes you look at yourself and say, well, am I doing the best uh, that I can do? Can I do more? Um, is there a potential for change in my life? Um, so it puts, a, it's, it puts a mirror to yourself, to oneself. Um, he th does things like outline his schedule and it's, it's like wake up at 5 a.m., you know, come back at 7 sort of thing. It's it's just work, 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 work. But because he worked, worked and worked and worked, he was able to then um, achieve quite quite uh, um, monumental things and go down a history in a, in a pretty significant way. Um, so yeah, Benjamin Franklin autobiography recommended for everyone. Um, recommended in particular for young individuals who are trying to, young people who are trying to actually develop themselves. Um, the English and the writing in it, you have to think about it in this way. Um, it was written in the 1700s, so it's not going to be contemporary. It's not going to be consistent with the way we write today. Um, and therefore, keep that in mind. So it may be difficult in certain instances, and it may be uh, a different sort of style of English. Um, nonetheless, it's it's a valuable book. And plus, it's it's good to actually read things which challenge you. Yeah, it's a, it's it's not it's not the best just to sort of um, go along with what you've been reading your whole life, you know, challenge yourself, force your brain to read things in a different way and structure your sentences in a different way. Uh, you know, it's, challenge yourself. It's, it's worth it. And it, you'll be, I think, happier in the end anyway, um, for what you've done, even though it may be more difficult, it just takes a bit more time to read it. And you may be thinking, God, this is, this is freaking so antiquated, but you know, when you get through it, you'll be happy that you did. So with that being said, um, have a good day.